I always find it funny too when like he'll he'll like shit on Dana White and fighters pay and all this kind of stuff. I'm with him on it though, man. Are you? I'm with him on it because. Yeah, but he also does it in a because it, it's it's also a it's also a grab. Oh, you know of what course. I'm saying? Because like it's he's like taking advantage of Dan is the guy. UFC is the sport, yep. and it's like oh, let me leverage and talk about that, yep. and like so I could we're doing this here type yep. thing. Yep. Which I mean, it's I guess that's the f world. To be fair, Jake was doing that before he was with PFL. He was talking that stuff to Dana like that beforehand. But but he was also building that company still then. He was also still trying to be like, I'm sure, hey, let's get some attention on us for what we are doing and what they're not. Right. And I don't even mind that. Like, if you have, and, and I've seen people be like, well, Jake's not doing it with the right intentions. He's doing it for this, that. I don't care. Who cares about the intent? If long, as long as it gets fighters more pay, don't care. Yeah. I truly don't. Like, the CBA at the UFC is trash. I don't care what people say about run your company and do it better. It's trash. 18% yeah. of the total bargaining for, for fighters is garbage. What do you think it should be? At least somewhere up in the 30s. Like, I understand not being a 50-50 split. I get that. Yeah. Because you're not a traditional league. It's a little bit more individual. And again, fighters have to earn that right to be paid a certain threshold. I get all that. But starting minimum fighter pay could easily be around that. Jake said 50K could easily be around that. Use the contender series as a way to vet who you want in the UFC. Do you think it's going to change at all? No. Not until the UFC fighters unionize, and that's probably not going to happen for a long time. What could make that happen? Guys stop acting like individuals and, and come together. Oh, that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's like trying. Oh, it's like fuck. dudes that you have to potentially go in and fight working oh, with man. you in a bunch of egos in one sport, whereas football and basketball, you're competing during the season, but in the offseason, it's you guys. You're the players coming together versus the man. You know what I'm saying? So. Damn. Different sport. Yeah. That's so, and that's damn. So, you, so like, go boxing ahead. did it with the Ali Act. The US government got involved. So, it's like you had a third party to kind of help with the Ali Act. So, it's like that helps a lot. But at the same time, boxing still had to come together. Fighters still had to come together, have a face to represent. I think no one wants to be that face for the UFC to say, I'm going to step up against Dana White, especially in the UFC. Yeah. You do that, and all of a sudden, those big fights. Ain't coming your way, probably, right? Like yeah. if Conor McGregor steps up, he could do it because he's such a big face and because he doesn't need it anymore. But if he does, then you know he's probably not getting another fight against Mike Chandler and all this. And yeah, so fuck, it's crazy how that works. Damn, when you got one guy at the top, it's you know yeah. How's it gonna be? I mean, there is also something to say about that. I mean, the the platform itself is also so massive that it does it does add a lot of benefit that wouldn't necessarily be included in the fighters' pay. And I know there's fighters who I don't know how many because I don't know the details of this, but there are fighters who are able to leverage the popularity that they do receive from the UFC for sure to 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 get money that to is get not other through deals. the UFC exactly. So there to is there is stuff. like some you know for Dana's I don't know argument. I've, I actually want to talk to him about this. On I'd love to interview him, but um, there are there are there are like those sort of intangibles that become tangible because right. of the actual right. and i have nothing like i have nothing against those guys that are go-getters that are going to do it and dana pointing those guys out as the as the guys that be like look you can do it of course but not everyone as a as a baseline is going to have that right and that's the problem is like you're dealing with the stars of the industry you can be a star not everyone's ronda rousey not everyone's conor mcgregor you know not everyone can fake it till they make it with the the outside of the cage stuff yeah. And there's there's few examples of guys being able to get over by just fighting. George St. Pierre, Habib. Yeah. You know, those guys can get over, but there's some guys that are fantastic, best in the world fighters that aren't going to draw a dime. They just need to use, learn how to use social media. No one cares, you know what I'm saying? And that's, yeah. that's, that's a hard truth, but you could be out here smoking everyone, but until you get to that, boom, title fight, whatever, you could be making, you know, I don't want to say pennies, but you could be making far less than you sh maybe should be. I see for the level saying, of fighter yeah. you are, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Just because that pay per view money ain't coming in, or maybe you're not the draw. And the only way for the change is someone's got to step up and do it. Yeah, yeah. Someone's got to take that that hit, and the one. And it's like any industry, though, right? Your pioneers aren't the ones that are going to be the ones benefiting from that first step. They're the ones that create the motion, and everybody else benefits from it. And that's yeah. the tough part. Who wants to be the one that, that takes the hit? Yeah, and then everyone benefits from it. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Yeah, man. So. Have, would you ever do any like fighting? I think so. Um, I, I I feel very disrespectful saying I want to fight you or yeah, this yeah. would be the guy I would you know <clears throat> fight whatever when I'm not training and I'm not doing it. I feel like it's very disrespectful to other influencers that are doing it. Yeah. To to be like oh let me just pick and choose who I want to fight. 
I'm a commentator dog. At the end of the day, yeah. like I would do it, but I feel like my place is boxing or MMA. Right now. Boxing dog. I'm not no shot. I'm getting it. This is what I said. I'm I'm smart enough to know, maybe a little too smart to be like, yeah, let me go in and just, you know what I'm saying? Muay Thai, whatever. No, dude. Way too much risk there for me. Way too much. I want to be able to to still have this this right now it's not because my voice is dead, but the, the vocal box to go in and call some of the greatest fights ever. That's what I want to do. But I wouldn't be opposed to it if the right situation came down the line for sure. Yeah, yeah. What was so so evolution of what you're doing and how you do yeah. it, like the commentating. In 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 that space in general, yeah. Who's the best at it right now? Man, that's a tough Who's the tough most question. popular one? Well, the best in the game right now, in my opinion. Um, Besides Joe Rogan, obviously. Rogan, Rogan's, uh, so there's different positions, right? Yeah. Rog, Rogan's the color commentary guy. In other words, he adds color to the broadcast. Like, if say if you and I are doing a broadcast and I'm, welcome in, folks, tonight we have a great night of fights. Let me send it to my, you know, whoever's with me. You'd be the color guy. I'd be leading the broadcast as the play-by-play. The play-by-play best guy in the world right now. Oh, peep, see, I'm going to make enemies, dude. Yeah, um, just because I got, be on, I got friends be... in the industry. Shout out Todd Grisham. Shout out, you know, everybody I've worked you with. Be it's, John Anik. Here. it's John Anik. He's the best. The guy for the UFC. He's the best. Fantastic. Seamless in and out production. Leads the broadcast. Throws the freaking alley-oops for Joe and DC and everybody to dunk questions on. You know, it's it's he's the best. Um, but as far as color commentary, I would say Joe's up there, of course. Um, Paul Felder, solid on the boxing side. So what makes color to color? The guy who's like, oh my God, like that guy? That You need that. You got to yeah. have some emotion. And that's where Joe excels, you know? Yeah. But it's also adding very important points that an audience that isn't maybe as well versed as you are can understand. It's almost, I hate saying the word dumbing down because that's not what you do. I see what you're saying. But though. you have to have some way of translating what's happening that's very complex into layman's terms. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, no, absolutely. And uh, that's where I think I would love to do it. The problem is... Those spots are diminishing. The Joe Rogans are fading away because fighters are now taking those roles. And who more accurate than a fighter to comment on what's happening currently in a fight if you have yeah. the ability? And yeah. I would love to do that, but more likely I'd, I'd probably go into the play-by-play play -play, uh, side of things. Yeah. And so, so how do you think you like evolve? Or you just do you just keep doing what you're doing in your lane and grow your like? I'm trying to, man. Yeah. Or, or do you want to like get picked up by? Oh yeah, for sure. At some point, I would love. And here I am talking again. This is the problem that we talked about with me and Misfits. Me talking so openly about issues that against massive companies like the UFC or anybody else is probably going to hinder that, you know? Just like me talking openly about the KSI Tommy fight and how I think it's, you know, this yeah, or that. Yeah, but dude, I feel like the world's getting to a point where like, yes and no. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like people are really gravitating towards just like genuine no bullshit. I, I would hope because so. there's been so much bullshit for so long and yeah. so much sugarcoat. Yeah. I feel like in general, just even in the in the content space, like I I'm, I work with some of these fucking streamers who just say the most outlandish crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. But and those streamers don't got to show up at ESPN on Monday true, morning. You know, true, what I'm true, true. So it's but like, but I feel like overall the world, at least the world, is what they're wanting. It's just more like just truthful shit. hundred percent. So there's just you're so seeing much the bullshit. turn on YouTube right now. hundred yeah. percent.